And welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for uh, Tuesday, the 28th of April, 2020. I'm Jason Parent, the Executive Director of the Arusta County Action Program. Uh, we continue Community Partner uh, Week, not Community Partner Week, that was last week, we're on Community Impact Week this week on ACAP Today. Uh, and today we're gonna be talking with uh, a father whose children are enrolled in our child care program um, at our Early Care and Education Center here at Gouville. Uh, we're gonna be talking with Chris Forbes in just a little bit, uh, as well as with Amy Murchison, who is ACAP's Program Coordinator for Family Engagement and Mental Health. She's gonna be talking about how we uh, oversee our programs in early care and education and why families uh, like the Forbes family um, benefit from the programs that ACAP offers. But before we get into all of that, we are going to start with the news that you can use for today as we uh, continue uh, this week on Community Impact Week uh, here on ACAP Today. We start, first of all, with letting you know that uh, if you are interested in ACAP services, we certainly uh, want you to connect with us. And one of the ways that you can do that in a way that's helpful for us to be able to connect with you in terms of what programs you might be eligible for is to go to our website and as you see we've sort of highlighted the area where we can where you can request assistance online and complete a short profile that will allow us to see what programs you may be eligible for before we reach back out to you. Uh, we also want to remind folks that we are helping individuals. I was just on the phone a few moments ago with Senator Collins' office, and they said that they're going to be probably keeping the portal uh, for the stimulus payments live only about another week. So if you have not received your stimulus payment uh, yet or have notification that that is coming, please do connect with us. We have an individual who can help you apply for your stimulus payment. If you aren't able to do that on the computer yourself, we can do that over the phone with you. Um, the rent relief program that has been announced by Maine Housing is a partnership between Maine Housing, the governor's office, and the community action agencies across the state uh, continues. Uh, this is ideal as May rent is due for many folks coming up. This provides up to a $500 credit uh, to your landlord uh, for your rent. That, that payment will go directly to the landlord. If you are having difficulty paying your rent in the month of May because of economic conditions that have impacted you uh, because of COVID-19, please do call us or go to mainhousing.org backslash COVID rent and you can complete the application right online. If you live in Aroostook County, ACAP will process that application and we'll be in touch with you. The next program we want to let folks know about is one that's a tradition here at ACAP, the Home Energy Assistance Program. Up until May 1st, we're hoping to get this extended, but up until this Friday, we have the allocation to be able to work with families and individuals who have been impacted by COVID-19 to count only their current income. Um, so if you've lost your job or your job has been uh, scaled back, please do contact us. We may be able to see if you are eligible for the Home Energy Assistance Program in the short term here. Uh, to help supply uh, additional uh, support for you with your heating cost. Uh, the Women, Infant, and Children's Program is also available uh, for families with special considerations around COVID-19. This, this provides nutritious foods uh, for families with very young preschool age children. Please do reach out to us if you think that this program may be a benefit to you and your household income has been impacted uh, by COVID-19. We want to remind folks that our workforce development team uh, are offering virtual workshops, uh, virtual workshop workshops, I should say, workforce workshops on how to create a perfect resume and interviewing tips. Those are the two courses in the five course series that are remaining. Uh, to register, please contact Kathy Williams. She's uh, at the email address there on your screen. We will be announcing later this week uh, the first time home buyers program that will go online. Those classes are typically held in person, uh, but there's a lot of benefit to participating in the first time home buyer program. Uh, Greg Doak will be on the program later this week uh, to talk about this program and announce the details of the first online offering of that program via Zoom. We also want to remind folks that if you are experiencing uh, homelessness or know someone who is or housing insecurity that ACAP has established along with uh, the University of Maine at Presque Isle, Maine Housing and other community partners, the wellness shelter, the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter at the University of Maine at Presque Isle for individuals uh, in this um, homelessness situation at this point. Please do reach out to us if you feel that you or someone you know could benefit um, from this housing option. 
We also uh, want to remind folks of the work that our community health programs continue to do, albeit at a distance at this time. If you're looking to quit smoking, for example, the, um, the effort is there. Elaine Sipe is available to help you at a distance and connect with you using uh, tools such as Zoom. Uh, we also have information at drugfree.org uh, as it relates to our Drug Free Communities uh, Partnership Grant and information online, uh, the quick, quick, quitlink.com, which includes information and support around the issue of vaping. And finally, in the last two items, we want to remind folks that Head Start and Early Head Start are recruiting uh, for the coming season. If you have a child, um, even if you're a pregnant expectant mother through a child up to the age of five, you may be eligible for our Head Start or Early Head Start program and we encourage you to contact us today at 768-3045 to get more information about the Head Start program and a slot that might be available for you in any one of our locations or in our Head Start home visiting program this fall. And finally, we are considering at this point planning as soon as uh, we are uh, notified that it's prudent to do so to advance with a summer Head Start program here in Aroostook County that would be a center-based program. And we certainly look forward to announcing more details of that as we uh, are able to. And with that, that's news and information that you can use uh, for this edition of ACAP Today. It's now my pleasure to welcome to the program first, uh, Amy Murchison, who uh, is with ACAP as a family engagement and mental health um, specialist under the program coordinator position. Uh, Amy, talk to me a little bit about uh, what we're going to talk about today in terms of um, how we put this all together in our early care and education programs, whether it be Head Start, Early Head Start, Child Care, some of our foundation classrooms. Um, it really very much involves the um, parents of the children who are engaged in helping to make decisions about how the program operates. So thank you, Jason, first off, for having us here today. Um, one of the things about uh, our Head Start program is that we have what's called Policy Council, which is made up of parent representatives from across Arusta County um, that have children enrolled in our programs. And we also have um, several community, represent community representatives that meet monthly. And um, as you can see on the slide, it, it talks about Policy Council is representatives of parents and, and the community. Every month they meet, um, we go over and talk with parents about monthly budgeting or the monthly budgets around Head Start, um, budget planning, program planning, attendance, um, data, monthly financial data, and really looking at um, having that parent voice in our program, how we design our program, how we're managing our program. Um, and parents also have the opportunity to, to participate in personnel decisions. So um, when people are being hired or terminated, parents are involved in that process. And you can see how the role of the governing board and policy council and management staff all overlap to provide that leadership within our program. And we have parent representatives from our policy council that then serve on ACAP's governing board um, so that, again, parents have that opportunity to voice um, what's going on in their community, what's happening in our agency, and, and can represent that consumer sector. Wonderful. Now, uh, we do have with us today a Chris Forbes. Chris and his wife, um, Anna, have two uh, beautiful children, one of whom is with him right now. The other one is napping. She's with him as well. But Chris joins us with Vigo, um, who's 18 months, uh, 18 months and, and an active young man there. He's having a good time. Uh, Chris, um, you have two children at Goulville, I believe. And, and talk to me about what that experience has been like for your family and how you've engaged in, in some of these leadership conversations at Parent Policy Council. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, Jason, and for having Vigo with us. Uh, I hope he's quiet enough for us to maintain this call. Um, no, it's been a really wonderful experience over at Gouldville. They, uh, they've got a very good staff there. It takes excellent care of the kids. Uh, they, they blossomed as soon as they got there, having that social interaction uh, with kids their own age. Uh, it was something that they couldn't get much of out here where we're out far out in Woodland and they're not in school yet. So uh, just having that opportunity was great. And uh, the assistance that we got for the low income uh, made it a lot more doable. It allowed me to be able to go to college and finish up and get my degree 
they should be mailing it here anytime since we're not going to be marching, unfortunately. Um, but it's been a, a phenomenal tool and being on the policy council uh, with ACAP, uh, as well as the parents meeting parents and, and the internal uh, board structure that we have there at, eight, at the uh, Gouldville facility, which Anna and I are also a part of, uh, it's been able, it's, it's allowed us to, to tie in from both the Gouldville facility and the ACAP uh, facility that, that run it all together. And, seeing how uh seeing what are you doing <laughs> seeing how uh, it That's all ties a, together and how the community is important and uh, what are you what say hi hi Vigo. hi nice to see you <laughs> what are you doing? so cute <laughs> you visit the map um, uh-huh i bet you he misses his teachers at Goulville, and i i bet yes. you he they miss him i know they miss him we Zoom with them once a week there. We, we talked to Miss Kayla and we saw Miss Brenda and Miss Kristen and uh, one, of the other, uh, one of the other kids that was there. Yes, you see you. There you are. That's dad, dad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess, tell me a little bit about that. You've, you've, um, you've been able to transition um, and Vigo and uh, both Vigo and Brooke have still had the opportunity to engage with uh, folks yep. at uh, Coolville. Yeah, it's been great. It really has. It, they reach out to us. Uh, Kayla's Kayla Farley. We uh, we email her uh, directly back and forth. She sends uh, weekly plans for the kids, activities to do inside, outside. It, it keeps us really busy during the days, and uh, and all the assistance that we're getting because the kids qualified for uh, for free meals, so they have continued to deliver those. And they've stepped up the program to include dinners now. So we're getting full gallons. Of, I mean, we, we can't even eat all the food that they're sending us. And it's, it's just really nice to, to not have to worry. It's not a worry, but it's a huge help. I mean, it's, it's a help that we're not used to. And during these trying times, it's been a godsend. It really has. I, I'm, I'm glad that I was here today just to mention how they haven't dropped the ball on the community that has come to, you know, appreciate their support how does that how does that make you and, and Anna and uh, Vigo and Brooke feel right now in terms of the the fact that you know we're all having to so socially distance and not be able to to be together but that you uh you continue to feel the support and and have the uh your 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 minds nourished and your bodies nourished as a result of your engagement with our programs well it's a huge security it's it's we're not dependent on it, but just having that extra back, back, back there, you know, supporting you, uh, it's it's good. It really is. It, it takes a takes a little of the a little of the bite off of this big mouthful of the situation that we find ourselves in. Amy, I want to bring you back into the conversation for a minute because you know that we have families across the Roostick County that um, are like Chris and Anna, and that are um, are, are being having outreach done to them both in terms of, of, of the coordinated activities, but also the coordinated meals. Uh, what have you heard from families um, from, from your perspective on a, on a broader scale? Is the, sim is the story similar to what Chris and Anna are experiencing? I, th I think a lot of families are feeling that support and relief knowing that um, their child's teacher or family coach or maybe it's one of our admin assistants that's contacting them, checking in with them. So even if maybe at the beginning they, they, they didn't need the meals or didn't want to use or get the food, but you know, after a couple of weeks and keeping in and checking in, they, they decided, yeah, we, we want to start getting food deliveries. And um, it just keeps that connection alive. And I think that's something, you know, not just for the families and the children that we serve, but for the staff um, that miss seeing the kiddos every day, miss seeing the parents, talking to the parents. It's, it's really helped keep that connection and that, that feeling of we're all in this together. We're all dealing with how to teach or how to learn in a different setting that we're not used to. And I think it brings that peace of mind to everybody that no matter what, we're all still here. We're all in this together. We're just going to take it one step at a time. 
I don't want to lose sight of what we were talking about earlier because Chris just shared a, a bunch of good news with us and we were talking initially about the, um, the parent policy um, council and, and Chris's involvement on that. From your perspective as a team member here at ACAP, why, is, why are voices like Chris's at the table so, so vitally important? Not only when we're going through unusual times like this, but just in the, in the governance of our programs and in the planning of our programs on a, on a daily and regular basis. I think it's, it's always important to get that consumer voice or customer voice or parent voice. It's, it's their unique perspective that they bring to the table and, and can sometimes open up some great discussion about, you know, oh, yeah, that's a really great idea. And how come we didn't think of that earlier? And so really bringing that perspective to the table around what it's like to be you know, a parent in college with two young children and balancing all of that and how, how has our program helped? What, what can we do better? How can, it helps us to, to say, we're doing this great, what can we do better? We'll look at some uh, pictures now, some of these uh, our viewers may have seen before of, um, of, of our program at work uh, in University County uh, of individuals um, and children in particular, lots of children on, on this scene uh, that are receiving activities that uh, our, our school bus is delivering to uh, and then are actually engaging in some of the activities in the case in the upper left hand corner engaging with um, a couple of our staff members at Goulville, uh, Hillary Albert and, and Wendy Deves in that picture with, with some children that they work with. Um, one common denominator in all of this, uh, Chris, is smiles all around. And, and um, it's nice to see smiles. A lot of people are very serious right now with everything going on, but nice to see your smiling face and Vigo's today, but others as well of people who are, 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 are pleased and are, receive, are feeling supported right now. Absolutely. No, it's, it's been a, for what it is, you know, I, we're, I think everybody's doing the best to make the best of it. And, ACAP has certainly been right there, integral, uh, you know, a keystone in the community to keep everybody together and keep everybody well informed and everybody's well fed. And the, like, like Amy said, we haven't lost those lines of communication that, that are so crucial to the, not just the children, but the, the workers, they, the staff, they love the kids, they grow bonds with the kids and, and form relationships. And it's, it's, it's torturous to, to remove everybody like, like it was just stop, cut, Send everybody home. It's difficult. It has been. I know that it's been difficult for families, and I know that your situation uh, where you were a student yourself um, heading toward graduation and life is very different. I have a son who's a senior in high school, and graduation season's looking very different than I think we all envision. Um, I think, though, that at this particular point, I'm imagining that you're excited um, for the future of your family. You're preparing to receive your degree, albeit in an unconventional way. What does life look like moving forward for your family? Uh, it's been a little bit chaotic. We're not sure where to set the dates for these changes. I mean, my wife is looking at making a, a, a shift home, and I'll be moving into the job sector. And... You know, we don't, I've already got applications out, resumes, but I, we don't have really set dates. And a lot of businesses don't know what they want to do right now with the hiring. And it, we kind of just have to ride it out right now. Just our, our keels up, let's keep it there. And as soon as all this settles down and offers start being made and businesses start opening up and people start going back to work, it's going to make a lot more sense. Are you, um, what, what are you hoping to do on the other side of this with the degree that you're about to receive? Well, with my automotive technology degree, I'd like to uh, I'd like to pursue some dealerships up here in the area, keep my training local, and uh, possibly do something on my own someday. I think you're going to keep busy running after Vigo from what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's he's, he's oh, yeah. time. <laughs> you can't keep you can't keep uh, keep that kid under wraps. He's everywhere. <laughs> Um, so I just want to get the, the sort of the last thoughts from you. Uh, Chris, are there other um, programs and services that you're currently re receiving from ACAP that have been helpful through you in this journey? Oh, absolutely. We, uh, were, we received SNAP food benefits, and I don't know if that was a statewide thing, but they, they threw a lot of money at a lot of people, and we were one of those people. That's helped a lot with the groceries. Uh, we do still receive WIC. That's That's... A lot of people think it's a headache, but really, 
it's very helpful. They give you a lot of things that you need and that we need and they're good for the kids. And it's been, that's been a big help. We're also part of the, the heat program. And even though it took a very long time this year to get our appointment in and to get recertified, uh, that all went through and that, that really saved us at the end of the year. So we, we appreciate everything that ACAP is doing for us. We wish we could give it back. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just been a blessing. It really has. We're, we're a young family starting out and, and having that extra help for people that help themselves, you know, it's, I, I agree with helping out people to a certain extent. And we all know that there are people out there that abuse the system and we're just happy to have it here and have it at our disposal and qualify. And, and it's been a, it's been a big help. Well, certainly your success moving forward and we're really thrilled and excited to see what the future brings for your family will be more than uh, paying it back. And, and we appreciate you um, and, and all that you and your family have done uh, to engage with us um, and to be a blessing to us. I know that that's true of the children, uh, to, the, to the teachers, to your children, to the teachers. And I know that you feel the same way about our staff and it's really great to hear that. Um, just wanna get last thoughts from both of you. And I've been asking my, my guests for what their advice is for people to sort of um, get through this uh, and get through this together. Amy, last thoughts from you on, on, on this topic, um, on the work that we're doing with families and what advice you might have for families moving forward. Uh, one, I want to say congratulations to Chris that on graduating, getting his degree. That's amazing. Thank and you. that he has given back to ACAT because he does serve as a on the Parent Policy Council. And that's a very important way as a parent that you can give back to our agency with giving your input into that. And that, you know, as I said before, we're all in this together. We're all dealing with life in a very different way and it's okay if you don't know what to do today and and that you're not alone indeed one day and even one minute at a time right Amy? yes chris your last thoughts anything else you wanted to share that we didn't cover and what would you like to give to advice for people out there uh stay stay secluded stay to yourself if you don't have to go out stay in uh there's lots of good videos on it Nice ones that'll uh, make you laugh about the situation. People being contradictory about staying unless you have to go out and then go out, but stay in if you, if you can. And, you know, just try to take it with a grain of salt and don't take anything too seriously. Otherwise, you're already got cabin fever. It's springtime. This is the worst time of year to have a problem because we all want to go outside. <laughs> so just try to keep cool and stay calm and ride this one out. Northern Maine weather storms better than anybody. That's certainly true, and we've had our fair share of storms. Oh, uh, yeah. Chris, thank you so much, and with assistance That's from Vigo, can you see right there, can we get one last look at Vigo? Because I think he's the reason why we're all we're all doing what we're doing. It's about Vigo and and the next. Uh, are you gonna come see Dad? Come on, <laughs> jump. <laughs> <laughs> that's, our, our, that's an action shot right there, there you, there you go that was your action shot he's a little acrobat this guy oh i couldn't think of a better way to uh to end it than with that smiling face right there oh he's being shy all of a sudden well chris Pico, thank you say so bye -bye. much can you say bye-bye bye vigo -bye? Bye -bye. Bye, <laughs> good boy oh that's awesome you guys have a good day thanks for having us chris. thank bye. you and before we leave you today um, on ACAP today, we want to just remind you that uh, aroostacommunity.com is there and available for you. If you need help or are looking to help others, this is the one site you can log on to to get help or give help. Please do log on. You do need to um, become a member, but it doesn't cost anything. And you can post a query. If for whatever reason you are not able to get online, give us a call at 764-3721 and we will uh, post any information on the site for you or help you with whatever need that you may have over the phone. And lastly, uh, we want to remind folks that we are in this together. Uh, as, uh, uh, as it was pointed out to us by Chris, um, you don't have to be completely alone if you want to reach out to us electronically, info-acap-info at acap-me.org, call us at 764-3721. Look for us on YouTube. We have a wonderful YouTube channel with some great stories and other activities uh, that you can access for children across Aroostook County. 
um, and also visit us on Facebook for the latest in information. And as we always do at the end of ACAP today, we want to share with you our snapshot of the day. Today's snapshot of the day comes to us from our team uh, at the Early Care and Education Center at Goulville, the small team but spirited team that we have working there on preparing meals to go out to families uh, like Chris and Anna Forbes' family uh, each and every day. Uh, these are veggies, lots of lots of veggies um, at uh, Goulville that are being prepared for the dinners that go home uh, to families uh, so that they can uh, prepare dinner for their families. So we thank you very much and thank our teams across the agency, both working from home and at uh, locations, uh, getting the work done, the great work done uh, for families like uh, Chris and Anna Forbes' family that we had the wonderful opportunity to visit with today. On behalf of all of us at ACAP, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition of ACAP Today. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.